Mario and Luigi are a pair of brothers who have begun their career as plumbers for the city of Brooklyn. However, a plumbing job in the sewer leads the brothers to a mysterious pipe that transports them both to a separate part of a mysterious new world. Now Mario, with the aid of Princess Peach and one helpful toad, must find his lost brother and save the Mushroom Kingdom from the claws of the King of the Koopas, Bowser. This is the Super Mario Brothers movie. The Super Mario Brothers movie is the highly anticipated animated film adaptation of the most iconic video game of all time, and is a collaboration between Nintendo and the animation company Illumination. Now, Nintendo doesn't exactly have the best history when it comes to adapting their most popular franchise. The 1993 Mario Brothers movie is regarded as one of the worst movies of all time, and for good reason. It's the furthest thing from Mario while still in good conscience calling it a Mario movie, I think you can get. So I can definitely see why Nintendo has been so reluctant for 30 years to give these characters another chance at the big screen. Honestly, I'm kind of disappointed this film isn't called the new Super Mario Brothers movie. You know, to mimic the line of new Super Mario Brothers games that released in the late 2000s and early 2010s. And to be blunt, I think that might be my biggest disappointment with this movie because the Super Mario Brothers movie is everything I wanted it to be. This film is a Mario fan's dream, and it is so good from beginning to end. This is a film that spans generations, and everyone who sees it is going to have something to love about it. Now, the voice cast is one that has been talked to death online, mainly because of the sidelining of the iconic Mario voice actor, Charles Martinet. And I completely understand that. I was a bit let down too. He is iconic as this character, and he's brought this character to life for what, almost 30 years? So it does suck. But credit where credit is due, the voice cast of this movie is all great. And yes, I said all. I love Chris Pratt, but he was never my first choice to play Mario. But I gotta say, he does a solid job. This version of Mario and Charlie Day's Luigi are Italian Americans living in Brooklyn. And this is a caricature of Mario that has been done plenty of times before. And I think that's absolutely the perfect direction to go in when doing something more narratively driven like a movie. And both Chris Pratt and Charlie Day do a great job at bringing the Brooklyn attitude to these iconic characters all the while delivering exactly what you expect from these characters. Mario being a lot braver and bolder, and Luigi being a lot more timid and scared. But that's just the surface of this fantastic cast. Playing Princess Peach is Anya Taylor-Joy, and this version of Princess Peach is a lot different than one you've probably seen before, unless you played Super Princess Peach on the Nintendo DS. But I think that's a welcome change to her character. Some of the other iconic Mario side characters you have in this film are Toad, voiced by Keegan-Michael Key, and Donkey Kong, voiced by Seth Rogen. And yeah, maybe I did laugh at first at the idea of Seth Rogen playing Donkey Kong, but it just worked for this film. But the one casting that everyone on the internet seemed to agree was perfect was Jack Black as Bowser. Jack Black is having so much fun voicing Bowser, and I'm having so much fun watching him voice Bowser, and the characterization of Bowser is so good. In fact, the characterization of everyone in this film is on point. Now, perhaps they deviate a little bit from the norm and kind of lean into some personality traits of some of the actors. But at the end of the film, you still see Mario, Luigi, Princess Peach, and the rest of the Mushroom Kingdom as their respective characters. And while he may not be voicing Mario, do keep an ear out for Charles Martinet's cameo in the film. Without a doubt, the best way they could have included him and his iconic voice. Now, there are a lot of movies out there that get dubbed for the fans. And to be honest, there are a handful of instances where that phrase just seems like a cop-out or just not true at all. But with this film, there's really no denying it. The writers and directors behind this movie love Mario and they love writing for Mario. They love writing a Mario adventure. And me, a Mario fan, adores every second of that. I adore seeing the Mario world be brought to life with so much love and care. 
And there are so many references and Easter eggs throughout this film that it would make the biggest Pixar fan shake. If you think this is just a normal Mario Brothers movie, it's far from it, actually. There are so many aspects to this film that take from so many different Mario games and games that just feature Mario. This film does not slack on the Mario media it's pulling from. Although I hate to break it to some people, I don't think there's a Hotel Mario reference in this movie. <laughs> Nice of the princess to invite us over for a picnic, eh, Luigi? I hope she made lots of spaghetti. Luigi, look! I could be wrong, but that doesn't seem like something they would do. But the world of Mario and the characters of Mario are brought to life in a way I never expected to see, and I absolutely loved every second of it. And helping it be brought to life with such care is Illumination's fantastic animation. Now, I'm far from an Illumination fan, but I have to give credit where credit is due. Their animation is top notch, and they nail every part of bringing the Mario world to the big screen. Their brand of bright colors and fast paced movement works so well with Mario. And the character designs overall don't feel like something that's an offshoot of the Despicable Me films. Every character in this movie, even the ones that have never been in a game, look like a Mario character. Perhaps some of Illumination's typical story tropes do make their way into the film, and maybe the film feels a little bit too short for its own good, but the absolute god work Illumination does on this film greatly outweighs anything I really wasn't a big fan of. And before I forget to talk about it, because I know I am, I always forget to talk about one thing I always really like about movies, and it's the soundtrack. The score to this movie is phenomenal. The orchestrated renditions of the Mario soundtrack is a thing of beauty. They turn the iconic video game music into some downright epic or even emotional music pieces, and I loved it. The film does feature its fair share of radio hits, and by that I mean just real world songs, but to the film's credit, they could have picked far worse songs. There are two songs in this movie that appeared that absolutely floored me. I absolutely adored hearing these songs in the movie. It was the most surreal thing, but it was the coolest thing ever. Perhaps this movie is just for the fans. But at the same time, Mario is something that is supposed to be easy and accessible for someone to enjoy. And this film more than delivers on that. It's very rare to see a Mario game with an intricate story. And this film is a traditional Mario story through and through. To say the film has a bad story would almost be like saying the film's unfaithful to its source material, because it really isn't. It's a Mario story. The film knows that, and, well, you should know it too. And to be frank, if you can't follow the story to this movie, I don't know what to tell you. I'm gonna make a bold claim here and say this film will be Illumination's Spider-Verse. Hear me out. Hear me out. I got a good explanation. The last movie Sony Animations made before Spider-Verse was the Emoji Movie. Talk about an absolute 180. And now, a lot of the Sony animated films we're getting look and are really good. But I can honestly see Illumination changing their course when it comes to making movies. Obviously, we'll still probably get a few Minions movies here or there, but hey, sometimes rents do, isn't it? If you ask me, the Super Mario movie is an absolute dream. It's a film that this Mario fan has wanted forever. And judging by the reactions from other fellow Mario fans, a lot of people are satisfied too. This just seems like a movie that everyone's gonna enjoy. Unless you're a stick in the mud like people who work at Rotten Tomatoes, but you know, what are you gonna do? Now, I haven't done this in a long time, but I'm gonna ask you guys a question and I want you to answer it in the comments below. What other Mario game or character would you like to see be adapted in a sequel? Now, I'm sure a lot of people are going to have the exact same answer, but I would love a Luigi's Mansion movie. Luigi, Egad, King Boo, you could throw in Daisy. It's something that almost writes itself. I hope you all enjoyed this video. And if you did, please consider hitting that like button. And if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to be notified when my next review drops. Oh, and by the way, check out the website. Until next time, it's me, Quint Dunaway, hoping you will keep it cinematic. 
the Mario. Mario! Swing your arms from side to side. Come on, it's time to go do the Mario. Take one step and then again. Let's do the Mario all together now. You got it. It's the Mario. Do the Mario. 